Okay, so hello my dear students. So welcome to the third part of our discussion for translation of foreign currency financial statements. So in the in the previous video we have discussed um, the current rate method no, in translating foreign currency financial statements. Again, so with the same illustration, it's just that um the sa current rate method yung US subsidiary uh, uh, yung functional currency ng US subsidiary natin was sa US dollars. So, in that case, diba, we use current rate method. But what if, diba, um, yung functional currency ng uh, US subsidiary is the Philippine peso. So, we'll use, no, for the measurement or we'll use temporal method for that. Okay, so, yun siya. So, we have here our same uh, illustration but we'll, we'll be using temporal method, okay? So, kung sa current rate method, uh, um, uh, mas better na start natin i-translate yung income statement accounts, then you'll compute for the retained earnings end. Uh, for temporal method, it's, it's, it is much better. It's much better that we'll, com we'll translate muna the balance sheet, you no? Know? or the balance sheet accounts, the assets, liabilities, and then the equity, you know. So, yun siya. So, mas better. So, um, di ba under temporal method, all monetary assets, all monetary assets uh, and monetary liabilities are translated using the current exchange rate. Okay. But the, ano, but the, um, non-monetary assets no, shall be translated as the historical rate or the date when the asset was acquired. Yun siya. Okay? Or same with the non-monetary liabilities. So, we have here, no, cash is actually a monetary asset. So, yung trans, uh, translation, uh, your exchange rate natin or your measurement exchange rate natin is actually the current rate, which is actually 40.25. So, you have here, cash is 37,432,500. Our accounts receivable, which is also a monetary asset, shall be uh, remeasured at the current exchange rate. So, you have 24,472,000. So, your inventory, our inventory is actually a um, um, non-monetary asset. So, um, it shall be translated at the um, exchange rate no, uh, when it was acquired. So, as stated in the problem, no, the um, the inventor, the ending inventor was acquired during the last quarter. So, we shall be using the average of the fourth quarter to uh, remeasure our um inventory so we have here based on the schedule provided no uh yung in ending inventory natin is 830,000 um then yung average for the fourth quarter is 40.22 we have 33 million 382,600 as our uh, the um remeasured amount of our inventory Okay, land, uh, land, buildings, and equipment, no, um, since, no, existing na sila at the date of acquisition, so we'll use a uh, historical rate at the date of acquisition, okay. Um, even though, no, the, ano, uh, the land, buildings, and equipment were acquired, uh, before the date of acquisition, still, ang gamitin natin is the, um, Historical rate, historical rate at the date of acquisition, acquisition of the subsidiary, okay, which is on, which is on January two, de ba? Which is on January two, yeah. So we'll use the furnish, uh, for then, uh, uh, exchange rate, jan ana forty pesos. But if it so happened, let's say for example, uh, after the date of acquisition, the subsidiary acquired property, plant, and equipment. Now, say for example, on on March one, de ba? So you'll use, of course, uh, the historical rate or the 
exchange rate on March 1. Okay. Um, what if we the subsidiary acquired property, plant, and equipment after the date of acquisition? Okay. So, but if there are properties that were acquired uh, before the date of acquisition of the subsidiary, again, we'll use um, the exchange rate the date of acquisition of the subsidiary, which is on January 2, which is 40, diba? So, yun nga, land, we have uh, 20 million. Again, 40, the circle rate yung ginamit natin. Buildings, we have 26 million. And the equipment at 17.2. Million. So we have total assets translated. No, um, you take note that in computing our total assets, we use different rates. Uh, we have monetary assets uh, at um, um, the current exchange rate, and then non monetary assets the um, exchange rate or the historical exchange rate. So we have total assets at 158,487,100. Okay. Since we have uh, our uh, total liabilities, you know, the accounts payable, short terms payable, and bonds payable are both monetary liabilities. So we'll use current exchange rate. So we have accounts payable of 25,760,000, uh, short term notes payable of 25,558,750, and bonds payable of 36,225,000. Okay, and then our common stock, of course, translated at the current uh, at the historical rate, which is actually 40, diba? that's 38.4 million and paid in capital in excess of bar using historical rate. At, uh, then that's actually 12 million. So, so, re, uh, so the measurement or so temporal method, um, kung sa current rate method, the balancing figure is actually the current. Uh, the cumulative translation adjustment, okay? Uh, here in a temporal method, ang balancing figure natin is the retained earnings, okay? So, ang balancing figure is retained earnings. So, this is actually, no? so since uh, the, the total sum of the to, uh, uh, liabilities and equity should total with the balance of our asset is actually 158 million 487,100. So our annual uh, no, retained earnings should be 158,487,100 less their accounts payable, less short terms note payable, less bonds payable, less common stock, less paid in capital in excess of par. You'll have um 20 million five hundred forty three thousand three hundred fifty. That's actually your retained earnings again. So balancing amount yung um retained earnings was a temporal method. Okay. So next uh we'll have a uh, translation of our income state uh, income and retained earnings. Okay. So first uh our sales now our sales is actually um of course, translated using the average rate, right? Um, we have uh, three million twenty times forty point two. Uh, forty point two divides our average exchange rate for the year. So you have one twenty one million four hundred four thousand. Then your cost of goods sold, not then, is translated using composite rate. So iba ibang rate ang ano gam uh, ginagamit natin uh, when we purchase. Uh, when we compute no our cost of goods sold kasi under current rate method uh cost of goods sold is um the amount of cost of goods sold uh, is actually translated using the average rate but for i uh, know for uh temporal it's actually um um different no uh, different rates ang gamitin natin or composite. So, we have here, in assume natin yung beginning inventory uh, then yung purchases natin. Of course, yung beginning inventory natin, that's actually, since uh, it, we assume that um, yun siya no, um, part siya sa beginning inventory na acquire from the subsidiary. No? Uh, so, beginning balance na inventory subsidiary. 760,000 and the exchange rate then is actually 40. So you have made inventory of 30.4 million. Okay. And then your purchases that then should be translated at the average for the year. 
Okay, so it's 77,184,000. Again, yung beginning inventory natin, that's is actually historical, historical rate. Um, yung purchases natin is average rate. Less ending inventory natin, di ba? So, subset, it's yung ending inventory were acquired. Uh, Na-acquire siya um, on the fourth quarter, di ba? No? Di ba? The fourth quarter, so... Um, yun nga, ang gamitin natin is average for the fourth quarter. It's 40.22, okay? That's 40.22. So, we have here um, 30.4 million. That's beginning inventory plus purchases. That's 77,184,000. You have total goods available for sale of 107,584,000. Less ending inventory. Again, trends uh, remeasured at the uh, average of the fourth quarter that's 33 million 382,600. We have cost of goods sold translated or remeasured uh, at peso uh, 74 million 1,400. Okay, and your cost of goods sold that then. Yung depreciation expense naman, so if it relates to um, yan, so uh, since this uh, expense uh, relates. Uh, in non monetary expense, and this relates to your property path equipment. So, therefore, um, it shall be um, remeasured at the historical rate. Yun nga. So, uh, same sa pag remeasure sa related asset. So, yun yung pag remeasure. So, yun yung exchange rate ng asset. Yun yun yung exchange rate when you remeasure. The related expense. Okay, so you have here depreciation as 100,000 times 40. Okay, it's 4 million. Okay, other expenses being a monetary expenses that's 40.2 average for the year. Also, income tax expense, a monetary expense, is, you'll, you'll, you'll also use the average for the year. So you have uh, 26,331,000 for other expenses and an income tax expense of 3,926,400. So you have net income before the measurement loss. That's uh, 13,575,200. Okay. Um, so temporal method, no? So ito yun siya, no? Since uh, we'll, uh, we have determined already the retained earnings N, diba? Have your retained earnings N. That is actually 20,543,250. Uh, yung na-compute natin kanina, since diba, is actually the product of the balancing figure no, from our uh, um, balance sheet accounts. Okay? So, ang gawin natin is i-work back natin yung net income. Diba? We have retain earnings, uh, retain earnings beginning, then add plus net income, less dividends equals RA end. Okay, so ang gawin natin is to uh, i-work back yung net income. No? Yung net income na nakatake effect na yung pre-measurement. Since, uh, diba, this is actually the uh, balancing figure. Yung balancing figure natin is actually the uh, 20 million, uh, the retained earnings is actually our balancing figure. Diba? Um, so, when we um, pre-measured or translate our asset asset accounts. So, therefore, uh, in this retained earnings end, um, included na dito sa net income niya ang um, pre-measurement gain or loss. That's why we um, we uh, squeeze or i-work back natin yung net income na nakatake effect na yung pre-measurement gain or loss. Okay? So, we have here retained earnings end Plus dividends, less retained earnings beginning, no? Uh, retained earnings beginning natin translated using the circle rate, di ba? And then, yun nga, our, ano, our net income is actually 13,373,250, no? That's actually uh, retained earnings and um, plus dividends, less retained earnings beginning, you know? Actually, 13,373,350. Okay? It's actually our uh, net income to retain earnings. So, since we do have net income before the measurement loss of 
uh, 13 million 575,200 and then yung net income to retain earnings natin is 13 million 373,250 so my loss so therefore we have the measurement loss debit na kasi nga nag decrease no? so if net income before the measurement loss um, or net income be before the measurement is greater uh, is, uh, is greater than the net income to retain earnings. Therefore, since ang mafollow man is 13 million therefore, magdedak ka ng remeasurement loss. Okay? So, if it so happened that the net income before uh, remeasurement is lower than the net income to retain earnings, then that's a gain. Sorry, a remeasurement gain. Okay? So, again, um, to summarize, okay, so you'll first compute for uh, all your first remeasure or translate the balance sheet accounts, okay? The monetary assets and monetary liabilities at current rate, and the non monetary assets and liabilities at the circle rate, also common stock or uh, also equity accounts at the circle rate. Then a balancing figure must be retained earnings. And then to compute for the end, no, um, in, uh, um, the remeasurement loss first is um, you determine muna net income before the measurement loss. So yung monetary items natin no, shall be uh, monetary income, monetary income and expenses natin shall be remeasured at uh, the average change rate. Pero yung non-monetary items na expenses now shall be remeasured at uh, the circle rate. Okay? And then, um, you work back mo, di ba, yung um, net income na naka-embed na yung um, remeasurement in or loss. Then, you are to uh, determine na the remeasurement in or loss. So, you can actually verify that, no? no? Actually verify that loss. So, also, you take note that um, at the ano, uh, beginning, we have uh, the yung, ano natin, monetary assets of 1.1 million. So, since um, uh, sa remeasurement, um, ang relevant lang kasi is the monetary, uh, monetary item. Since um, hindi naman nag-change ang value ng non-monetary assets and liabilities in historical rates. So, over across the years, its translation rate is actually ano lang, um, historical rate. Ang nag-change lang is are the monetary items and the mo monetary assets and monetary liabilities. Okay? Kung sa current rate method, um, ang, ang basis for verification is actually the net asset position or net liability position because all the net assets, the current, the assets and liabilities are uh, translated at the exchange rate of which nag iba iba. So the temporal method kasi, of course, ang, ang non-monetary items, same yan siya every year. No? Ang translation rate niya. So, which is actually historical. Uh, what ang mag -differ lang are the monetary assets and monetary liability. So, kaya for here, we'll determine lang if it's monetary assets or monetary liabilities. Or net monetary assets or monetary liabilities. Okay, we have here, uh, we have monetary assets of monetary assets of 1.1 million and monetary liabilities beginning of 1.8 million. So, we have net monetary liability, di ba, of um 700,000 so net um, monetary liability monetary okay so have here exposed net monetary liability uh, liability position beginning that's 700,000 times 40 diba that's 28 uh, million. Okay. So, monetary up, uh, the income no, decreases monetary liability. And then, it increases, um, pag increase yung monetary liability pag may um, expenses no? and dividends. So, that's why 
um, adjustment for the for the change in net water processes during the year. So you have yung okay, deduct mo yung increase in cash and receivables during the year. This is actually the sales. This is actually the sales. Okay. Deduct mo siya. And then, um, i-add natin yung decrease in uh, monet uh, uh, i-add natin yung increase no in monetary liability such as yung purchases no that's one uh one million twenty thousand translated at the average for the year yung other expenses natin that's forty point two six hundred fifty five thousand that's forty point two that's twenty six million twenty one thousand yung income tax says naman of course at um, average exchange rate is three three million two hundred six thousand four hundred, and then dividends, which actually um, translated at the at the date when it was declared, which is actually forty point ten, de ba? Forty point ten. So declared on September one. Okay. So yun siya, no? So net monetary liability position translated using rate. In effect, at the end of each transaction, it's actually 25 million. Um, it's actually by the sum of the beginning and then the adjustment. It is 25 million 437,400. Then we have exposed net monetary pos liability position for the year. So let's check. No? So we have here our monetary assets. So monetary assets, not then. Monetary assets. So we have monetary assets of cash, diba? cash and accounts receivable. Okay. Then we also have monetary liabilities, no? monetary liabilities okay so we have actually um accounts payable plus short terms notes payable and then bonds payable okay so different that is actually the net monetary liability of 637,000 for the year for the end of the year, you have 637,000 translated at the uh, before current exchange rate, now 40.25. So, we have um, net monetary liability position translated using rate and effect at the date of each transaction of 25,437,400 uh, uh, versus exposed at, at monetary liability position at the year end, uh, remeasured or translated at the current exchange rate of 25,639,250. So, pag mag-increase yung monetary liability, that means loss. Pag mag-decrease yung monetary liability, that means gain. Same as, with, if we do have net monetary assets, pag mag-increase as gain, pag mag-decrease yung net monetary assets as loss. So, in this case, we do have a uh, monetary li liability position man of um, 25,437,400. Versus um, 25 million 39,250 nag-increase siya. Diba? So we have the measurement loss of 201,850. Okay? So that's temporal method. So thank you for listening. Okay.